Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see everyone here today. It's such a beautiful day. I know y'all are like, have to be like me, longing for these sunshiny, pretty days, warm days, and, uh, and time to be together. It is a blessing to be here. As we gather here today, we know there are people throughout the community, uh, where there's a radio or a computer or a TV or that can hear our voice and as both as we sing and as we speak about the power of God in our lives. And it is our prayer and our hope that those who do hear us, that that power becomes real in their lives as well, uh, that God may speak to them. And, and so we, in, we invite everyone who can hear us to open your hearts and your minds to all that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, would have to say to you. Thank you for being here. Thank all of you for being a part of this day. Well, Steve, I forgot to mention, we're glad Beth's with us this morning. Of course, she's got a different name than probably when the last time y'all saw her. But, uh, and also glad to have Miss Dorothy able to be back with us this morning, too. So glad to have everybody here. We're going to sing just a little talk with Jesus. We're singing out of the Heavenly Highways today. So if you'll get that one out and turn to hymn number 84, 84. you to stand at this time. We're going to have our affirmation of faith this morning. It's in your bulletin. Let's all stand. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father Almighty, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. 
We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is hymn number 144. We're going to sing all verses of glory to his name. 144. Our next hymn is hymn number 258, and we're going to sing all verses of Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, 258.
something new this morning. We got special music this morning, Pam? Nobody singing a special? This time we're going to turn it over to Brother Steve for this morning's message. Thank you. For five years, I served a church that that sang all of their songs from like the Heavenly Highways or the Mole Hymnal or usually the Mole, uh, the Mole Hymnal with the shake notes and things. Of course, it was all in parts and everybody could sing their parts. Everybody in that church could sing their parts but one person. And that person was me. And uh, I used to tell them, I said, I am a quartet's worst nightmare because I'm going to sing whatever I think it can fit in there. And uh, as I was going through that song, I just realized I'd been adding words to that song all along. And I fixed it on the last two verses, but um, those are powerful songs, and it really brings people together, and uh, they're a joy to sing. Enjoy that. This morning, if you have your Bibles with you and would like to join with me in reading, we're going to li- read Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 13, and I think I'm going to stop at verse 49, 13 through 49, Luke 24, verses 13 through 49. Luke 24, verses 13 through 49. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. So it was while they conversed in reason that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and have not known the things which happened there in these days? So they said, and he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who have arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. They told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some ate hun- and some honeycomb. And he took it and ate in their presence. And he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things must be fulfilled which is written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, 
And thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send, a, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you have been endued with the power from on high. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his words. You have heard the story of John Wesley, the founder, if you will, of, of our denomination. John Wesley was a man who, who sought to serve God. There was within him a, a passion to serve and, and to serve God with all of his mind, his soul, and his strength. But Wesley's desires did not always meet with the expectations of others. The Anglican church of which he was a member of was, was cool to him and his method and style uh, of ministry. His heart was in it. It was truly in it, but not so much can be said about the Anglican church. Feeling a bit, a bit heavy-hearted and discouraged about it all, he, he made his way to a Moravian chapel one day on Aldersgate Street in, in London, England. It was there while someone read Martin Luther's preface to the epistles of the Romans that something, something took place in his life. Something took place inside of his soul. He said that he felt strangely warmed. And in his own words, he penned these words. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for my salvation. An assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and had saved me from the law of sin and death. That warmth that he felt became the power to carry him on, to continue in his ministry and the purpose that God had called him to. And today, the Methodist Church exists. There's a godly power around us, a power that comes from God, from Christ, from the Holy Spirit, from the words of Christ found in scriptures, from the scriptures themselves. A godly power that, that can transform, it can change, it can heal, it can supercharge, it can comfort the human soul. It can strangely warm our hearts. This power is, is not dormant or outdated or part of our imagination. It is real. It exists all around us. It exists in this, this sanctuary at this very moment. It exists out there in, in the world. It exists in your home. It exists in your space. Sometimes I think Satan tempts us to believe that the world is, is, is too far gone. Or even some people are, are too far gone for God's power to invade uh, their souls. To invade their souls and make from them a, a new creature from someone that everyone had given up on. Or an individual had even given up on themselves. But we do not believe that, do we? We can't can't believe it. For each of us has seen what God can do. We've all seen what God can do in this world and, and in people's lives. We've heard the stories or had experiences ourselves of those moments when our hearts were strangely warmed. When the good news of Jesus Christ burned in our hearts or the hearts of someone who wanted to cling to and needed to cling to for God's mercy and and God's grace for them. The world and the one who is over the world would like us to think it's over for us. 
But there is no more hope that faith can move across the valleys and the hills of God's creation to minister to a lost and dying world. The Hebrew leaders who had the power had finally managed to create an opportunity to destroy, destroy Christ. They had planned and they had plotted until finally they were able to succeed. Jesus was eliminated and, and thus the threat. The threat of a different kind of understanding of God, a different approach to living on this planet with all of God's children had ended. Jesus, even with all the power he possessed, would soon be fading, a fading memory in the minds of only a handful of people in the years ahead. Jesus was dead, and so now was the nonsense he spoke of. The world seemed to have won, and the believers and the followers of Christ had lost, and it was all over. It's always been the case, hasn't it? God wants to do something good. God wants to do something really good. And humanity finds a way to see that there is something wrong with it. Or corrupt it to the point that it is barely recognizable anymore. The Hebrew people had a history of missing God's intentions and underestimating God's power. But so has all of the world. The Anglican church could not see what John Wesley was accomplishing as he sought to, to save soul after soul. Humanity has often missed the work that God was doing. The transforming power of God's spirit, the power of God's words has always been underestimated, even by the faithful. They thought they had stopped Jesus. They believed his power was lost. His people, his followers had fallen for him, but now the, the, hope, the hope that they had in him was all hollowed out and emptied out. It was gone. It was just a void. But God, our God has never been one to not have it his way, has he? Humanity may stray. Humanity may resist. Humanity may corrupt the intentions of God. But God is God and God is not constrained by the weaknesses of humankind. God is not intimidated by Satan's guile. They thought they had killed him and his ministry. And for many they would have agreed. Everything they hoped for was gone. Just as Cleopas testified in today's passage... But we were hoping he was the one to redeem Israel. But Christ and the power of God were not through with our world. Jesus walked with them and he dined with them until they saw for themselves that it was Christ, that indeed he was living, but not only living, still speaking to them of, of who he was and what God had intended to do through him, from the very beginning, he spoke to them of scriptures. He explained to them all that God had done and, and what he was doing. He took bread and, and broke it with them. And in those moments, these men went from, as Jesus says in the scriptures, these men went from being sad to speaking of how their hearts burned within them as he spoke to them. So transformed are these men that they get up the next day excited to join in with the other believers so that they could share their own experiences with Christ. So excited that they, they are that they want to tell their own good news. So they left their village and they returned to Jerusalem. They went back. They went back to the most dangerous place they could have possibly gone, where people were still hidden out of fear, to tell them what God had done with them on the road to Emmaus. His words burned in their hearts. They became different men, bold and excited to tell the world what had happened to them in the presence of the risen Christ. That is how God works, isn't it? When we believe there's nothing more for us, 
There is little hope that things can be better in our lives or in our souls. Suddenly, God is ready to speak, and he speaks. He speaks, and he says to us, you are mine, and you belong to me. Come and, and let us take time to commune together. Read and hear the stories of Christ again. See how I awakened the world to the possibilities of, of redemption from sin and, and life forever with Christ if you would just believe in him. Walk with me. Walk with me for just a little while and listen and, and I will help you to see who you are. I will teach you. I will teach you just how much I love you and what links I would go to make you believe in me. Ask for my holy presence in your life. Pray for me to come. Pray the Spirit will, will set your heart ablaze as you walk with me and me with you. The God we serve, the God we believe in, the God we worship is always ready to make that journey with each of us, with anyone. Yes, God has that power. And that power is still here. Now in this place. That power is, is all around us. That power is still moving in our world, calling people to believe, calling people to let Christ into their lives and, and into their hearts. Our world needs to know what Christ can do. It needs to, to know the power of God in, in each of their lives. It needs to experience and embrace Christ. It needs the, the flame of the Holy Spirit burning within each of them. Just as it burned in us when we believed. Our God is not done. Our God is not defeated. Or a being of our imagination. God is still living and breathing in this world. Living and breathing in our lives and the lives of others. And our God is still longing to warm the hearts of the lost. Even those who listen to the master of this world more than they listen to the master of the universe. Those men thought it had ended with Christ's death. And yet God turned it into a new beginning. A new relationship with his creation. A new beginning with all of us. God turned it into a promise to be with us and in us forever. If only we would let him. God wants to set all of our hearts on fire. He wants us to believe he can do it. And he wants us to preach it and teach it and believe it with, with all of our might. He wants us to testify to the world that God can strangely warm hearts because God has already warmed our souls as well. All of us here today have professed Christ. There was a time when, when God's Holy Spirit led us uh, to that realization. There was a moment when the, the stories of Christ's love for us burned in our hearts. And it assured us. It assured us that no matter our circumstances, no matter our failures or shortcomings, God wanted us to believe in him. And all of his promises. God's Holy Spirit has warmed our hearts and our souls. But I say to you, it was, it was meant for more. It was meant to warm the hearts and souls of all of God's creation. Yes, God has the power to transform and strengthen us against the world. And all of its unholy distractions. John Wesley went on to preach and to teach all who would listen to him. And today, thousands have been saved because of what the Lord did in his heart at Aldersgate. There was a burning in your soul once. Let the world see and hear what God did for you. There are souls to save and hearts to set on fire. With God's power from on high and our testimony on our lips, we still have the power to change the world. I'm closing here. The altar is open for anyone who'd like to come. For any need that you have, I, I encourage you to come at this time.
Our closing hymn is hymn number 197, and we're going to sing the first and fourth verse. Let's all stand as we sing.